The following is a presentation of TNT Sports. to go back to Chapel Hill and play uh, the, the Carolina Courage. Just to go back there and play on the field that I consider heaven on earth is exciting. But when I'm with the Freedom, I'm going to be fighting hard to make sure my team wins. It's a special homecoming today for Mia Hamm, who had a legendary career at the University of North Carolina. Today, she returns as a professional with her Washington Freedom as they take on the Carolina Courage. A pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Fetzer Field. I'm John Paul Delacamera. This is soccer's field of dreams for obvious reasons. The titles won, the great players, and one of them, my partner, Wendy Gabar. Wendy, what was it like playing on this field? Thanks, JP. This truly was my field of dreams, and the, the people who have built this sport of women's soccer have coached on this Fetzer Field for the last 20 years. Coach Anson Dorrance and Bill Palladino, and many of the great leaders they have developed are founders of the new WUSA. The most legendary, Mia Hamm, refers to Fetzer Field as heaven on earth. When her feet hit this pitch, magic happens. And another great, Carla Overbeck, never Never lost a game in her four years at Carolina. She is inarguably the best leader this sport has ever seen. A little sidebar, both Mia and Carla will wear the captain armband in today's match. Back to you, JP. Thanks, Wendy. While there will be many ex Tar Hill greats on display today, the one the fans are coming to see wears number nine for the Washington Freedom. She's Mia Hamm. Starting lineups when we come back to Chapel Hill. Our kids. Band-Aid brand advanced healing. Clinically proven to heal faster than ordinary bandages, it acts like an instant scab, sealing in the body's fluids so wounds heal faster. Band-Aid brand advanced healing. Soccer's where I met Tracy. I met I'm Felix. Met we all play together. We have fun together. He's the coolest. My nickname is Bigfoot. Goalie queen. They call me Bulldog because I'm really aggressive. Soccer makes me feel pumped up. It gets you stronger. It makes me feel great. Soccer's when I run faster than anyone. I can play forever. Introducing Venus from Gillette, the first razor designed to make you feel like a goddess. Protective cushions surround three blades for the closest shave ever in just one stroke. So close, your skin stays smoother, longer. And that's something all goddesses are entitled to. Now, individually sealed blades are easy to store, easy to change. Venus, reveal the goddess in you. Air, it's in the air. Carefree, breathable panty liners keep you fresh and dry. They're the only ones with air spun, a unique layer that lets air through. Every day, be fresh. Be carefree. Attention, the best deal on your Astroworld season pass ends this Monday, April 30th. Get your four-pack pass at Kroger now for just $49.99 per person and get unlimited visits. Free early park entry during prime time. Four free visits for friends. A Waterworld season pass free. Free Six Flags over Texas and Fiesta, Texas. Special events. Concerts. And big value book savings. Hurry, get to Kroger now for your Six Flags season pass. Offer ends this Monday, April 30th. There's a great future in this company. Ever thought about selling cable TV? The money's just unbelievable. The harder you work, the more money you actually make. Or anytime you make that sell, it gives you a feeling of accomplishment. I love the flexibility. Uh, I get to see my kids off to school. Run my errands. Go to grad school. The benefit that they offer are tremendous. You get medical insurance, deal insurance. 401k. Paid training. I get free cable. Interested? Call Time Warner today. I should have done this 10 years ago. <laughs> Superhero. The crowd is still coming in at Fetzer Field in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, getting ready for the Washington Freedom and the Carolina Courage. And welcome back, everyone, to Chapel Hill. 
My fit partner, Wendy Guevara, back up making the jog from downstairs. It's time to check out our starting lineups being brought to you today by Clean and Clear. And there's only one change in the Washington lineup from what we saw in week number one. Justy Baumgart will get the start, number 17. But keep your eye on number 11, Michelle French. Interestingly, she got the call up to the 2000 Olympic team when Akers had to withdraw due to injury. And for Carolina, keep your eye on the player, number 12, Winley Wrong, who is regarded as the most feared defender in the world. Her role is huge today because Overbeck, number four, is nursing a sprained ankle. Large field in Chapel Hill and a big crowd. They're all expected to cheer for Mia Hamm, even though she's wearing the uniform of the enemy. Hey, who put up that sign? We've got a rivalry coming back with a kickoff. Every inch, every second counts. Because every race is the most important race in all their lives. That's drama. That's NASCAR. Coming July to TNT and NBC. Welcome to Jeffrey Stone Limited. I'm Jeffrey Stone and we're Houston's pen specialists. We offer an extensive selection of pens, accessories and refills in all prices and styles, as well as an experienced, knowledgeable staff who are ready to serve you. We stock most major brands including Mont Blanc, ST DuPont, Cartier and Schaefer, and we're an authorized Mont Blanc repair center. So when it comes to your pen needs, remember Houston's pen specialist, Jeffrey Stone Limited, since 1978. Listen to this. Only Gilman Country in Fort Bend has a huge selection of Hondas, Mazdas, Nissans, Lincolns, Mercuries, Mitsubishis, Chryslers, and Jeeps all in one location. Turn south on Highway 59 and head to Gilman Country, just five minutes south of Sugarland. That's where you'll find the fastest growing dealer group in the country. No big city prices, no big city headaches. Turn south on Highway 59 and head to Gilman Country, just five minutes south of Sugarland. Great day today in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. We are nearing kickoff between the Washington Freedom, looking for their second straight win in the Carolina Courage. You can also hear the play-by-play -play of this telecast in Spanish by selecting SAP in your television remotes. Washington Freedom in white. They take the kickoff. Carolina Courage in blue. We're underway. Baumgart played it wide to the right side and now at the back. Expect a lot of space on this field today with these teams normally playing with three in the back. And it's a very long field in length and in width, about 75 yards, same as RFK Stadium. At the back, it's Barr. Skyler Little, one of four sets of identical twins playing in the WSA. She had a strong game in the inaugural. And it's for Bertini, and it goes out of play. Throw in for Bertini of Carolina. Look for Roberts on that far side, and it goes out of play. Today's coach is Jim Gabbard to the left. Marsha McDermott to the right. Marsha, the only female coach in the WUSA. She considers it an honor and a privilege. I spoke with her before the game. Isn't bothered by the fact that there's only one woman coach in this league. Feels it with all the great coaches out there that in due time, many more will join the ranks of the WUSA. See, if you have never known Marsha to back down from a challenge, definitely on the field. I had the privilege of playing with her uh, for two years in my Carolina career, and I'm, I'm guessing that she's handling this the same way as she did when she played on the field. Just Actually, Marsha was one of my uh, biggest inspirations on the field. Defending his grub on the ball, Agarisa. One of the star foreign players in the WSA. She's broken up. Good defensive move that time by the Freedom. They move it up. Virginia sent it up the middle. They were looking for Baumgart. And instead it comes back. Carolina the attack. They're trying to get Hender shot free. Oh, mistake there at the back. Moldix in the clearance. Brought down by Jankowski, number 11 on the right. Jankowski with good speed and a good cross for that right side. The two number 11s go. French is there defending her. And the Freedom... We'll clear it out. A couple of surprise starters today due to some injury problems. So you've got Bertini and Hendershot. We'll see how they click when they up top. And uh, Bertini is in a, in a different position from what we saw against Boston. She's going to play out on the left, but she's played there for Canada. As a matter of fact, we saw her score a nice goal against the U.S. in the later half of, latter half of 2000. Remember it well, Stacey Bart sending it in. Mullenick stayed right there. It's loose in the box. And that could have been an own goal, but it's cleared out for a corner. But there was some confusion that time in the box of the Washington Freedom. 
First corner kick coming up, and Hagadisa will take it. She nobody takes them. She's going to be looking to target Danielle Fotopoulos, number six. She's very, very tall, and Lisa hits these very well. She can connect with Fotopoulos. She's so dangerous. Third minute, scoreless. Hagadisa striking it off the right foot. Polnix comes out, got two fists to it. It stays inside the area, and then it's cleared away by Washington. Brought back down by Adisa. Nice ball inside the header. Up high and a bit wide. What a great cross by Adisa. Here's the earlier play that led to the corner. Nice uh, little jersey pull in there by Cromwell, or short pull in, and the ball bounces in no man's land. You can't let that happen if you're the D.C. defense, and they came up very lucky there. And this is the last shot we saw here by AccuView. Beautiful bending ball into the box, and look at this beautiful header here by Fotopoulos. We said she's very strong in the air. They're going to look for her. Ball is switched by Fotopoulos. Left side, good run by Bertini. Out wide, defended by Ham. It's blocked by Mia. And we'll clear it up the right side in a space to the feet of Rosalie. Her and Pertinia are breaking, but there are four already back for Carolina. And the Courage will win it. Long ball from Wendley Wong. It turned out to be an aimless ball. It will go out of play. Throw in coming up. Aerial view of this great college stadium where so many great national careers were launched. Grub with it out of the University of Notre Dame. We'll play it back. Left side. Emmy Barr. Barr bringing it up. She's out of Santa Clara. To French. Tackle it away. Hagarisa. Pushing it forward to Fotopoulos. Overbeck striking it. And her shot couldn't get to it. Freedom take it back. Up the middle. Baumgart. Good ball, but the flag is up on that left side. French jumping the gun on the wing. Don't miss your chance to ask Carla Overbeck a question. Ask that question live at halftime. Send your questions to WUSA on TNT at AOL.com. The AOL keyword is WUSA. And Overbeck today playing with a sprained right ankle. We'll see how she goes today. Nordby, the goalkeeper, also playing despite a Charlie horse. Both of those players injured in training this week, not in the game against Boston. Well, and Nordby was very, very questionable right before the match. Uh, and Overbeck, with her sprained ankle, she was moving well yesterday, even in 5v2, having a tough time. But they've dropped another player back, yeah. so a four-man defense will help her cover that space. And it has to be because they're worried about what could happen back there with Carla not at 100%, same with Nordby. Well, and the other thing, JP, and we know this from watching Carla with the U.S. team, she's very comfortable in a four-back. This has got to do loads to her confidence. Overbeck with it. They did play some at four in the back in preseason. A lot of it was with three. And Teddy Biankowski goes out in front of the Washington bench. It's a throw-in. And another note about uh, Carla's uh, captainship and her leadership. She is, um, has the ability, Coach McDermott has told her, go ahead and change the system into a three-back if you see that's what we need to do. So she's given her a lot of responsibility on the field. Emmy Barr with a throw-in from the near sideline. Going quickly to the wing. Pertinia to French. Back for Pertinia. They've got two on her, and the flag was up on that far side again. Overbeck will put it back into play. Virginia scored the first ever goal in the WSA. If you were with us in the inaugural game, you would have seen it. A penalty kick in the late stages. Off a deflection out. There'll be a throw in. Again, it's Emmy Barr. Seventh minute. The look as it's brought down. Virginia was also brought down. Rachel Wu, today's referee, making that call. Saw her last week in the Atlanta home opener. Here's the long ball, and Nordby comes out, makes an easy grab. One of the things the Washington Freedom want to do today, create more chances. They had eight shots on goal out of the 18 shots in Washington, but Jim Gabar not happy with that last pass. He felt his team was too impatient in the offensive third. Coming back the other way is Hendershot. Looking across it, deflected out, should be a corner. Second one for the Carolina Courage. And again, you should keep your eye on Fotopoulos, but also Carla Overbeck. She did this with the national team pushing up. Right, number four. She'll be making one of the runs in the box. Also, Hendershot's got some height on the back post, so Carolina looks real strong coming through the po coming through the box on this kick. Tiffany Roberts is also up, awaiting the strike from Hegarisa, the Norwegian international. Players fall down and shot a goal. Follow some confusion in front, and Carolina scores. Bertini 
Let it go. Provided by AccuView Hegarty, so she's so great with these corner kicks. Look at this precision serve into the box, and Bertini attacks it, hits it back in the direction it came from, and heads it down. Great reaction by the Carolina Kurds. They're pumped up. The Norwegian international finds a Canadian international. There was some confusion in the box with a couple of players going down. It may have distracted Mullenix a bit, but a good goal for Carolina. Their first of the regular season as the ball goes out of play. And Savannah almost scored a goal last week that would have tied the game against Boston. She subbed in that game. She was not feeling well. That's why she didn't start today. She does get the start. Comes through. You know, JP, I think it's critical that Carolina has her on the field because of her higher level of understanding and tactical awareness. She combines well with Hegelisa. Hega's in a league of her own out there. She needs somebody up top that tactically understands her. When we wrong, we'll clear it out. Hegarisa might be the most brilliant player. Some might argue CC in this game in terms of a midfield position, but you can't go wrong with either one. You know, JP, they, she's 31 years old and everybody's saying she's old. I think that's pretty young. She's very young. Here's a long throw by Barr. Loose in the box and clear it out. Agadisa, nice ball. Most of her touches are so good on the ball. Knows where to play it, how to play it. Jankowski, a good ball too, but it's slightly behind Fotopoulos. Coming in after, a nice move. Fotopoulos from Baxter. They play together in college, and Rachel will calls the foul. Here's one of the things Washington wants to avoid, those free kicks. Outside the area, especially with players like Hagarisa on Carolina's side. This one will be about 23, almost 23 yards from goal. Five! One more on the wall! You can hear Mullenix calling for three more on the wall. On the referee's whistle, Hagarisa strikes it. It got through! And just went wide at Surrey Mullenix. The danger of Hagarisa whether it's the run of play or on a dead ball. JP Carolina comes out in a high pressure, and, and the Bay Area didn't play this much of high pressure. This is D.C.'s second game. They had a, a weekend off last weekend. I think they're really struggling, struggling with this high pressure by Carolina. Mullenix will clear. Goal by the Freedom, the first one they've given up in the regular season. They won game one on a one nothing Mullenix shutout. Emmy Barr sending it up. Brought down Baumgart out of the University of Portland. Sends it through, but then the Nordby is there. One of the world's best goalkeepers spent the Nordby. Played in the last Olympics. And won the gold medal. It's her against Siri Mullenix. Battle of the goalkeepers. Nordby clears. The look was long. Hendershot got around the defense. Hendershot beating Skyler Little on that far side. Looking across. And recovery by Skyler Little. But it will still be a corner kick. Here's the free kick here. This ball is actually bending out away from the post. If she hit it with her laces, it probably would have been on net. And let's take a look here. There's some mix-up in the box. Hold it there. Look at these two players. They go down. It's DC tripping their own player, and the ball gets served into the box. And Bertini just attacks it back where it came. Back live off the corner kick. But Thomas up in the air. Yeah! Right off the line. Outstanding defense to the right of Surrey Molnix. And it'll be a goal kick. We've had a foul inside the box anyway. 12th minute, Carolina leads. Stacker has played very well. Game one, she was strong. She picked up the first yellow card, in fact. When she fouled Tisha Venturini. Pushed all the way back. Mullenix will just hold with the top of us there. Washington trying to get themselves back in this game, and so far, Mia Hamm hasn't touched the ball. You know, JP, they, in order for DC to be successful, she has to be involved in the attack. And where I, you know, maybe hypercritical here, but I, here she goes. She's going to get the ball now First out touch. wide, right? But where she's best is combining with one of the Brazilians up top. She has the freedom to go forward. Hegarisa, nice flick. Taken back. Amanda Cromwell will play it left. Bar. Good ball into space. This time, no flag on Michelle French, who makes the good run down the wing. Here's the cross. It's wide of Nordby. Ham, 
That ball was out, apparently. Good try by Mayhem to try to keep it in play. The WUSA on TNT is being brought to you by Hyundai. Proud to be a charter sponsor of the WUSA. Hyundai is backed by the freedom of America's best warranty, the Hyundai Advantage. And by Venus from Gillette for Women. Reveal the goddess in you. Carolina leads on a goal by Silvana Bertini. This ball is going to be cleared away. Not a down by Burt. Teresa. It's going to be knocked out. Stacker sent it wide. Lindsay Stacker in the D.C. defense there. She's playing in the center number 16 for White. She is so good and she's so smart. Doesn't have a whole lot of speed, but she's going to go ahead and pick up that ball. Risa maybe needs to lift it a little bit more, put a little more pace on it in order to get it through that seam. Off the throw. Bar. Then towards French. Jankowski with a clearance. Mullenix calls for it. One fist to it. Bertini kept it in. Try to play it across. A better ball and she had some players open, but it would have been difficult. with it, and then the clearance. Amanda Cromwell is on that 95 World Cup team for the U.S. Upfield, Pertinia, wide to Ham. Tough hit there, we're going to play her down. And that's a tough one. Ham is down on the field. Rachel Wu is stopping play now as Mullenix cleared it out. And there's a hush in this stadium. Let's take another look here. Here's Ham. She wants the ball. She prepares it. But a bone-crunching tackle here by Baxter comes in. And it looks like it maybe hit her in the shin guard. I'm hoping it's not her knee. She was flailing around a bit. If it was her knee, I bet she would have been holding that uh, a little bit stiller. Again, a bone-crunching tackle there. Uh, it looks like she did get hit on the knee. Hopefully she's going to be okay. This is awful to see. You know, as many times as we've seen her go down, lots of players do not get a good piece of her. That was as hard as I've seen her get hit in the open field like that. Well, and the problem was uh, Baxter was kind of sliding in, coming in very aggressively. But what Mia did was she had her foot planted, and that's when you're going to really get into trouble. Stretcher is called out. Jim Gabara always busy. Coaches like to do that. 16th minute, he's seeing something. Maybe something he'll address at halftime. Maybe something he'll address now while there's a timeout. Again, here's another look. Ham goes in. Baxter comes in really hard. Ham's knee is planted. Her foot is planted, and she's, her knee was in a buckled position. Does not look good for Ham, but we'll get a word as soon as we can. Well, she's up. Didn't want the stretcher. But a nice ovation from this crowd in Carolina. Carla Overbeck helping out Mia Hamm, and Carla Overbeck knows all about what a player and what a person Mia Hamm is. I always say that she is a better person than she's a soccer player, and, you know, that's saying a lot because um, everyone thinks she's a superstar. Um, you know, she has a great personality. She has a huge heart. She cares about every single person on our team and you know others outside of the team um, and you know i just feel fortunate to have known her for so long and um, i know she would do anything for me i would do anything for her um, she's a great friend great friends help one another off the field like that we can only hope for the best for mia ham and we'll get a report to you as quickly as we possibly can jimmy gabar over there talking to her and she is assisted to the bench, and right now Washington will play with 10. Kiki, what I'm hoping is it just scared her more than anything. I mean, that was a good blow to the knee. Anytime a player, you know, takes a blow like that, it's, it's frightening. Yeah. And uh, so hopefully she's going to shake it off. They do have a couple of subs that were up and stretching it a little bit, just in case. Clear it away. Take something, a little edge off the game. Especially with the crowd. Overbeck will clear it. Left side. Bertini. And then Grubb. One goal today. Bertini. It came in the eighth minute. On that far side. Played up by Roberts, who's brought down. Stackers over there on the far side as the ball went out. Eighteenth minute. 
Ball played over to Barr. Washington playing with 10. While they check out Mia Hamm's condition on the sideline, we await a report. And JP, I'm sure we'll know soon because Gabara did not choose to uh, make a sub. He's playing with a man down, and this could be very dangerous for him. Especially already down by a goal. Krista Davy has been up stretching. Long ball played out. Concern is for the knee. We had a good shot of it. A couple of good shots of it. But the right knee. She's been bothered by her right shoulder. She told me before the game her shoulder felt fine. But right now it's another problem. And she's in good hands. Uh, Sue Hammond was the trainer for the U.S. team for years and years. And so she knows Mia very well as a player and knows what her pain tolerances are. She's not only the star player of the league, she's the franchise player. So everyone's hoping Mia Hammond is okay. French will give it up. Kramer will play it back. Pushed all the way back to the feet of Mullenix. 19th minute, one to nothing, Carolina on a Silvana Bertini goal. When they wrong. JP Mullenix is so good with her feet. I mean, their serves are uh, 40, 50 yards, maybe even more. But I think the uh, DC midfield needs to come in and support Rosalie and Bertini more because basically they're trying to play against four defenders. Foul was called by Rachel Wu to the outside of the box. Far side of Bentham Nordby. We have a free kick coming up for the Washington Freedom. Still going with a 10. Set for the restart. On a bending ball that hits a two-man wall. Pertinia came in a bit late on it. And Carolina will be clearing it. JP, so many times games come down to set pieces, and Baumgart just did not do a good job. She had great height on the back post with stacker number 16 and bar number 2. She should have gone ahead and served it into the box. Our pleasure to welcome a special guest in the booth, the COO, Chief Operating Officer, the WSA, Tony DeChico, at one time the acting commissioner. Tony, as we watch uh, Hendershot first, got to get your thoughts. I'm not sure where you were sitting when Mia went down, but, boy, that has to hurt when you ever see that happen, the franchise player. Well, of course, JP. How are you? And hi, Wendy. Hey, uh, but Tony. certainly we hope Mia's back in the game. Uh, Jim Gabera, the coach, I'm sure will be careful with her. Tony, so many things to do when you start a league. You've got a lot of the greatest players in the world. What were some of the problems that you may have encountered in dealing with all these different foreign teams and foreign federations? That couldn't have been easy. Well, you know, Lauren Gregg did a great job for us uh, going overseas, visiting a number of countries, and doing the political stuff she needed to to bring these players over. So we're excited about our international talent because it makes us the best in the world. You realize as well as anyone, it's... Uh it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, so you want to see what happens at the end of the year. So you're probably not as concerned about a lack of goals in the early going, but you've got to be pleased with the crowds right now and hope that they can stand up. Well, we're, we're pleased with almost every aspect. Yeah, we want to see goals, but you know, it's attacking soccer. There's no one sitting back and playing negative soccer, and the goals will come. And you know what? Eventually an American will score in the league, JP. Yeah, maybe today. Hey, do you miss coaching? I've got to ask you that, <laughs> my friend. Well, you can say it. You can be honest with us. You're know, with friends here. Yes, I do. I miss coaching, you know, and I think my role with the league right now is probably where I could best serve it, and I'm excited to learn everything I am and work with the people I'm working with. Sky a Little will play it back to Mullenix, who will clear it out. Picked up on this near side. Jankowski, decent ball. Hendershot after it, now it's cleared away by Washington. Tony, you've been traveling. We've seen you at all these games. What are you looking for when you come to these games? Is it the operations you're studying, the crowds, or something else? Well, the whole, uh, yeah, the whole operation, the whole presentation. We're looking for the product on the field, the uh, presentation in the stadiums, the energy here. And, and of course, we're, we're looking for, um, you know, the fans to be out. And, and as today, they are out and it's exciting to see. We've said this before, but you can say it as a coach. Why is it so much easier to teach defense? And why is it so hard to get the offense in sync this early? Oh, it's just easier to be destructive uh, when you're, these players are playing together for the first time. It's difficult. And especially when you have international players playing with American players and vice versa. So uh, that will come with time. Tony, how much of a problem do you think the communication has been between the foreigners and the American players? Well, I think it's been remarkably good, Wendy. But obviously, when you're uh, meshing styles of play, uh, the communication does 
come into play. And, and, and uh, they're doing a great job. We're going to see a lot of goals in this league. Trust me. Of course, uh, you know we, we've heard some great stories about the Chinese players uh, taking English. Uh, so it's then I guess you've got some translators in place to help the Brazilians out. Is that still occurring? Yes, and you know everybody's trying to learn the languages, and I think there's a bunch of uh, American players now that understand some Chinese. So there's a cultural exchange going on. We're seeing Mia Hamm get ready to come back in and re-enter the game, and that is great news. So Jim Gabar wanted to wait. Mia tested it. Tony, you can start breathing again. Uh, that's, that's real exciting, you know, because uh, I'm sure that Jim and the head trainer, Sue Hammond, would not be uh, putting her back in if they were real concerned about it. So let's hope that Mia is as well. We're getting word that it's an MCL sprain for Mia Hamm. If she go out there, she'll test it. If she can't go, she'll have to tell Jim Gabara that. Right side, Jankowski getting some freedom, beating French to the byline for the cross. And that one gets out of play. And JP, she'd love to have that one back again. Jankowski finding more room today than she found last week against Boston. Carolina perhaps playing with a little more confidence. Marsha McDermott said they did some things well last week, especially in the second half. Well, we've, we've referred to their attacking style. That's what makes it so exciting when we see Carolina uh, play. This is another exciting game. The Carolina-Boston matchup last weekend was fantastic. Long clearance. Jankowski intercepts. Tries to set it back the other way. Stacker. A little holding there. The ball is cleared out. It's like wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the crowd called that one, too. Jiffy, we do that up here in the booth. They sometimes, just don't have a camera on. Sometimes, yeah. It'll be a throw-in for Jankowski. Settled by Burt. Carolina up by one. A driven ball across. And that was cleared away. And came back to play some defense. And then now the Freedom will pick it up and take things over with French on the left side. Left by Burt. Agarisa brings it down. When they're wrong, we'll hold. Ball approach and it's kind of a little stop that. Hegarys is over there. Far sideline. Petopoulos looking to create some room. He's going to get a corner kick out of this one. This will be the fourth one. Well, I think Petopoulos and uh, Hedershot are creating problems for the Washington defense, and you can see some direct balls being played in there. There's Mia Ham working a little on the defensive side and had some good mobility that time in that clearance. So Hegarisa will take the corner kick. Nearly 25 minutes gone from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. A one to nothing lead for the Courage, looking for more off the corner. And Molnix took a swing at it. There was a push off inside. Maybe a goal kick coming up. Tony, have any good stories about something unexpected that maybe happened in the league that you could share with us? Uh, something funny in dealing with someone? Well, you're catching me uh, off guard, guard here, JP. Like to do but give me a, a moment. I'm sure there's many stories. You guys said you'd like to have had more time, but realistically, you got ready, got off a nice inaugural game. A lot of people have worked very, very hard. Of course, we would like to have more time, but I'll tell you what, when it happened, it was so exciting, and it continues to be. All the way back. Carla Overbeck will clear it out. Be a throw in coming up. Washington Freedom. Not as much possession in this game as they had in the inaugural game. Right side for Ham. Pratinha looking, sending it in. That was deflected, and Norby will capture. Bent to Norby. Three World Cups, a couple of Olympics. And adapting to life in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where she has one of her teammates, Hagarisa. It's a good idea to put the foreign players together, so at least they had someone that spoke the, the same language on these teams. It's very difficult. We learned that from our own players when they went to Japan. That when, they, when they were there by themselves, it was a whole different experience than when they had a teammate or a friend, another American there with them. Ball played across. Barr will bring it down. Still one nothing, Carolina. Washington looking for their first real good chance against Norby. But defensively, Carolina have tightened things up from a week ago. Boston had so much possession, so much room. They hit the seams, but not in this first half. Well, the, the defense looks very confident for Carolina. And the reason is that here's Overbeck here heading the ball back to Norby. She's just so confident, and I, I believe that she's getting a lot of that confidence from the fact that she's in a four-back. She likes that system a little bit better. 
Nordby clears in the 28th minute. The only goal so far, Silvana Bertini. That one came in the 8th minute. Freedom will work it. Played back. It was dangerous. Not enough pace in that to Stacker. She has to step up. Skyler Little brings it down right side. And she'll just move it out. Bertini. Ham taken away. On the ball, Hegarisa, nice ball inside, slightly behind Patavolis. She took the shot and Mullenick stopped that. But every time you watch Hegarisa, Tony, I'm amazed at her brilliance that I've seen her play for years. She, if she has time, she's going to find a teammate in space and it's going to be a dangerous pass. You coached against her. What was the strategy in going against her? Oh, uh, actually, the strategy that worked best is in the 96 Olympics. I put her teammate, now her teammate, Tiffany Roberts on her and just tried to play the game 10 versus 10, and Tiff did a great job. Okay. Brent's going back after this ball. Towards far. And then back to Mullenix. Siri striking it hard and long towards Cromwell. Lubeck pushed up and won that. Sent up by Baxter, nobody home for Carolina, all the way back to Mullenix. Carolina out shooting Washington so far five to nothing. How does Carolina or how does Washington, Wendy, attack and find these seams? They're not getting any any help. I still think that they need to find Ham out on the side. Here we go. We sort of programmed that pass last time we started talking about getting Ham involved, but she's so dangerous when the ball's at her foot. You see her combining here. Pushed over to the left. Baumgart has a good left foot. You see it there, but it's just high and wide of the target. Maybe a goal kick for Denton Nordby. Good call, Wendy. That was their first shot. <laughs> Thanks, well, Tony. When Mia Hamm's on the field, they do have to find her. And sometimes when you're on the flank, you get forgotten, but they have to find her. And here we see this view provided by AccuView. Justy Baumgart, top of the box on her left foot, which is her strong foot, and just a little bit wide. Benton Orbe had it covered on the near post. So Mia Hamm running okay so far from what we can see, from what was described as a sprained MCL. Happened several minutes ago. This ball is cleared away. Burke sent it long. Barr is back for it. Yeah, come on. Tony, the next time we bring you up, you're going to have another major announcement, maybe like where the championship game is going to be. Is that the next major? Well, that is one of the next major announcements, and we're, we're just getting everybody underway, and we've got some great options. And that's going to that's be an exciting announcement, JP. So we'll pin you next down time. next time. Okay. Thanks, Tony, for joining us, and good luck. My pleasure. Thanks, Enjoy Tony. Enjoy the game. It's I, a great one. I could still call you coach. Once a coach, always a coach. Here's a lead pass to Michelle French on the left. A chance maybe for Bertinia. Almost pushed down. Bertinia handles the ball well, plays it back. Bomb guard off the right foot, and that was blocked. All of a sudden, though, Washington looking a little dangerous. Hendershot going the other way. Skyler Little breaks that up. 31st minute. Carolina leading 1 0. Rosalie. Only with Vasco da Gama will play it wide right, then Ham plays back to Skyler Little. Freedom using that back three. Stacker. They had some success with it in week one. Here's another long ball brought down, settled by Baumgart. She tried to play it back. It was intended for Fatinia. And now clear. JP, one of the things that's really helping DC, we talked about it earlier in the match. When Rosalie and Patini get the ball, they need closer support in the midfield. And Baumgart has been that player who is tucked right in behind him. She's playmaking very nicely. Now for Carolina, Aaron Baxter, number 23, she's got to get more involved and win those balls. Well, it's time to win or go home. The NBA playoffs continue as the Magic host the Bucks. Coverage begins tonight at 8 p.m. on TNT. The Bucks. Have beaten Orlando 11 consecutive times. Tracy McGrady, who's averaging 34 points a game, will try to change that series around. Ernie Johnson and Kenny Smith in the studio tonight. Ball cleared on the left side now. Michelle French trying to run it down. Burt had the better angle, and she'll just send it out of play. Throw in for French. Back for Barr. Freedom trying to come back into this game, down by one. Overbeck calling it, letting Nordby take it over. Overbeck directing traffic in the back, as she always does. Ham comes back after this ball. Mia, off a left foot, a touch. Brought down by Bertini. She has the lone goal. Tiffany Roberts, cutting it left. Roberts sort of the X-factor. 
when it's three in the back, she'll be in the midfield. She can drop back and be that fourth defender. Here's Hegedisa. Couldn't lift it high enough. The flag was up anyway. And now it's acknowledged by the referee, Rachel Wu. TNT is proud to bring you the debut season of the WSA and as a service to our viewers, we'll be providing additional information about the league, teams, and players throughout the game on your TNT squeeze. It's located at the bottom of your screen. The Rosalie pass. Ham. Everyone waits to stay on side. Mia takes on a defender or two. And then Bertini came in for additional support. Marsha McDermott said we can't afford to get involved in these one-on-one -on -one battles because of Washington's great attackers. And so far, the cover has been there. Switched over to the near side for Burt. Stacey Burt. Nice move up the wing to create some space. Jankowski had to wait for that ball. Defended by Barr and Cromwell, but she's still got it clear. Ball is missed, and so did Hendershot. Bertini cuts it back, but Tomalis was open. Needed a better pass. Risa, what a save by Mullenix. Carolina's knocking on the door. Another corner for the Courage, their fifth. This is some great action here. Look at Jankowski. She draws two defenders. Ball goes back post. Mullenix can't get to it. And Bertini is the player on the back post that keeps it alive. Hagarisa will think pass always before a shot, but she knows when to hit it. She hit it a ton. Great save from Mullenix. Here's the corner. It's deflected out. Jankowski bringing it down. A couple of cuts. Broke it up. And the freedom come back with it. Wendley Wrong covering up that space. Chinese international. Loop that ball over Barr. Roberts now running on this side for the first time. Forcing Barr to just clear it out. Throw in for Carolina. Much better tempo here than the last two games that we've seen here on TNT. Wider field certainly helps that narrow field in Atlanta. Kind of restricted play. Baxter sending it in. That's cleared. Skyler Little sends it out. Overbeck bringing it down. Long time USA captain lost possession. Bob Baumgart. Jankowski wins it. Good turn, but that ball needed to go wider to Hendershot. Patina sending it down. Looks for the return. That's too far. Wembley Wrong is there. Wembley Wrong will clear it. The ball. <laughs> Bertini brings it down. Those international players take it to another level. Even playing for different countries, when they play together with each other, they're excited. Oh, they are. I mean, camaraderie, you know, and they've combined together in order to um, have the best league in the world. So they're pumped up. It's so important for the sport. This is the next step for, uh, for taking women's soccer to the next level. Stacker will keep it on the ground. There's Baumgart. Carolina trying to pick up a bit here on the pressure that they had early on. Stacker. Cromwell. Amanda will play it to the far side for Ham, and Bertini followed it. Up that right sideline. Rosalie. Roberts stayed right with her. Good defense by Tiffany Roberts, but Rachel will still will say that the ball belongs to Washington. It'll be on that far side, they got the foul on Roberts. And a shot played it back. Hagadisa. She'll just hold it. Puts the stop to it. Another good ball. Right to Bertini. Tackled away. Mia's made a couple of nice defensive plays here today. People forget that she does play that way too. And the offside flag does go up. She's one of those superstars that is not afraid to get dirty and play defense. And JP, you're right, it does work both ways. And somebody should have been telling Bertini she had pressure on. But look at Ham sliding in, comes up, all ball, maybe a little bit of player, makes that good defensive play. JP, I wanted to expand upon what you're saying. You've got Bertini, who's typically a forward, and you've got Ham, who likes to play up top. They're actually a little late getting back for those defensive plays. You notice that they're just naturally kind of drifting towards the attack as opposed to playing defense. So I think we're going to see a lot of action on that side of the field. We'll keep our eye on it. Washington and White try to play it down. Carolina's got it. Here they come. Hegarisa has some space. Toes it ahead to Hendershot. And then it's cleared away. Once this team reads Hegarisa, they're going to be so much more dangerous. Well, they are. And I think she should have played it wide to Bertini because Ham is still jogging back. She's not playing defense right now. This one's taken away by Cromwell. And 
and the two collide. Foul on Carolina. Virginia immediately calling for a card. Grubb will give it off from the left. Cromwell. Amanda Cromwell will bring it to this near side towards Barr. 38th minute, once it up in Carolina. Could be more. Pegarisa had what could have been a goal were not for a great save from Mullenix. When they wrong, blocked by Grubb. Hegarisa right there in the ball. Good patience. And then she played it back to her Norwegian teammate, Nordby. Jiffy, she looks okay with that right quad that's right in the goalpost and practice a bit of a charlie horse. She's serving great balls for the right quad. They tested her before the game and judged that she could play. The WUSA on TNT is brought to you by Clean and Clear for clean, noticeably clear, beautiful skin. Clean and clear and under control. And by Aramax, the official laundry detergent of the WUSA and active woman everywhere. Jen Grubb will bring it up. Push back. Little. In the middle for Stacker. Then to Barr. 39th minute. Carolina up on the Bertini goal. Sky to Little. Rosalie turns, gives it back to Little. Straight up the middle she goes. She'll follow up her own ball. It deflects somehow towards Ham. Bertini was wide open. A better ball. She's through in a breakaway. Here's Mia. High cross towards Bertini. Bumped down by Jankowski. French will play it across. Quick shot taken. Headed away and saved the goal perhaps. Tough for more angle to see, but it looked like it was at the back post where Overbeck was. First corner for the Freedom. Washington nearly tied it up. French on that far side to take it. French hits it off the left foot. Up in the air with Cromwell. Heard out by Hegarisa. Sky to the only one back now. 40th minute. Carolina leads at home. Good ball right side. Played up by French off a deflection. Ham looking. Mia picked up by Roberts. It's played back out to French, who's on the opposite side. Never left from that corner kick spot. Baumgart's taking her spot on this left side. Rosalie with Brazilian flair that only they can do. She stopped fouled and we'll get a free kick just outside the box that's the creativity those the brazilians bring to the game and here's a look at this last attack here the foul actually occurred right at the top of the box there and if it was about a yard further in could have seen a pk called you've got grub back there mia ham three of them are around the ball Baumgart. it goes off a of left foot a lot of choices Struck by Baumgart! Why? Oh, from our angle, Jake, yeah. that looked like that was going in. It's tough on those free kicks. A lot of attention, you would think, is focused on Mia Hamm, and she didn't take it. And here we'll take a look, presented by AccuView. Look at this bending ball over the wall to the near post, and just a little bit wide, but you can tell from Benta Nordby's body positioning that she was fine. Another look here, and listen to that as it hits the AccuView banner. Sure. How about that? Carolina still on top trying to take this lead into the locker room at halftime they were trailing Boston a week ago at halftime and could have been trailing by worse right side Rosalie she has Pertinia with her up top a lot of players back defending with Carolina and we've got a corner second one for the freedom French had taken the last one now Baumgart's going over there and French is staying on this near side of the field. JP, keep your eye here on the back post. She's going to be looking for this area here. If it's a good serve, she's got good height. Players making a run in the box. Didn't quite connect on that serve. Norby took care of it. Freedom send it back. Barr looks for it. Oh, she got crunched. Stacy Burt was there on the defensive stop. Settled. Played in by Cuomo. Good ball. Head it with one. Should have been a tying goal by Baumgart. She was free. That would have been electrifying to tie uh, it up in JP. the 42nd minute. JP, she's gotten in behind the defense. Now look at this ball here. Great ball by Cromwell. Freeze it there, freeze it there. Okay, now what she needs to do is head it this way. She deflects it, actually flicks it. Go ahead, now roll it. 
flicks it wide. That is not, the margin for error is going to take it past the post. She'd headed it back in the direction it came from. That would have been a goal. So Bombard came close, not close enough when the 43rd minute, and Carolina still leads. Wendley Wrong sends it back, but the game, Wendy, no longer is one-sided as it once was. No, you're right, JP, and actually, I don't know, maybe we're seeing a bit of fatigue by Carolina, but Washington's making a big push here at the end of this first half. Well, earlier, Carolina was out shooting Washington 5 to nothing, but since then, Washington's had some chances. Push back to Barr. Carolina up with that high pressure again. It results in a Fotopoulos takeaway. Danielle's cross, the header, and it's right at Molinix. We're seeing some much better creativity now on both sides. Spaces are open, and players are finding open players. Well, D.C. was a little bit, um, I would say, relaxed, a little too relaxed, and Fotopoulos was letting them lull him into a little bit of relaxation and then go ahead and attack. At the other end, Fortinia. Great play by Nordby, playing high and knocking it away. If Bertini gets to that ball first, it's 1-1. Washington back with it. Baumgart brings it back, pulls it back on the left foot. Looking long for French to the byline. Can she get it? Looked like she kept it in. Norby will put it back in play. The last attack that we saw, look at this ball. Beautiful ball by him to uh, Rosalie at the top of the box. And Nordby comes out huge, and that is the clear view presented by AccuView. You know, JP, she's playing outside of her box. We should point out to the viewers, as long as she comes out of that box, she can only use her feet. And she's playing very aggressively. It's sort of a, a sign of the change of the, um, the game itself. She did last week against Boston. Mullenix missed it. Fortunately for her, it's clear, but not out yet. Baxter sending it back in the air. Quick shot taken by Baxter is blocked. And the Freedom just push it out. Here's Michelle French. Long ball. That's a good one. Coming through. Bretigna, the nail play continues as it comes back to Nordby. And Nordby clears. Bretigna's still down. Carolina with it. And Rachel Wu will stop play for Bretigna. It's been a pretty physical game already. Mia Hamm went down on a hard challenge this time for Bretigna. One touch sooner. She's and this ball was taken down one beautifully by Pertinia. Look at that touch, and it gets her in behind the defense, but Burt comes up huge. I think that ball maybe just knocked the wind out of her. Good defensive organization here. Nice ball in by hand. Pertinia, great touch, and Burt comes in hard, and it just looks like maybe, oh, he got a little uh, form <laughs> there at the top of the box. Good job on the camera work. We're seeing things the refs aren't seeing. <laughs> We're at stoppage time. The benefit of replay. A minute of stoppage time, put on the board, Hegerisa. Long ball that French denies, but gave it away to Baxter. More players down. Three players went down in that collision. Bongard pulls it back. Half a minute gone in stoppage time. Team is shaking off that last hit. Hender shot, that's blocked. Bongard brought it down. And that's going to do it. We didn't quite make it to the end of the stoppage time. One to nothing in favor of the Carolina Courage and a goal by Silvana Bertini. And coming up to the half, we will chat with Carla Overbeck. You will see some of the top plays so far in the young WSA season, plus our first half highlight. Silvana Bertini has the only goal. Mia Hamm's homecoming will it be spoiled. She left with an injury but came back. Still one nothing, Carolina at the half. Kids today are too soft. Mom cleaned our cuts with soap and water. Now Band-Aid brand introduces her free antiseptic wash with lidocaine to relieve the pain. Uh, Where's this one uh, at? New Band-Aid brand hurt free antiseptic wash. The raindrops keep falling on my head. But that doesn't mean my eyes will soon. The Sonata from Hyundai, with the freedom of America's best warranty plan for 10 years, without a care in the world. Get 0.9% APR financing on the Sonata now.
introducing Venus from Gillette, the first razor designed to make you feel like a goddess. Protective cushions surround three blades for the closest shave ever in just one stroke. So close, your skin stays smoother, longer. And that's something all goddesses are entitled to. Now, individually sealed blades are easy to store, easy to change. Venus, reveal the goddess in you. Go. The Shine Control Powder from Clean and Clear. It's blue, so it helps get rid of shine and redness. Ready? Ready. Invisible Shine Control Powder. Clean and clear and under control. Speed is measured in the hundreds. Metal by the ton. But it's something as human as one move, right or wrong. One moment of fear or one burst of courage makes the difference between victory and everything else. That's drama. That's NASCAR. See NASCAR's heroes race for the championship. Coming July to TNT and NBC. This summer, something dramatic is happening on TNT. The drama ah! this summer on TNT. Welcome back, everyone. The Carolina Courage have the lead at halftime over the Washington Freedom. We heard about the injuries for the Carolina Courage. Nordby bothered by a Charlie horse, and Carla Overbeck also bothered by a sprained ankle. But Carla did play well in the first half. Carla, welcome. It's one nothing in favor of Carolina at the half. I assume you've got your AOL mobile communicator with you, so we're going to ask you to read a question and answer it. Okay. Um, the question, Sarah in Georgia wants to know if it is difficult to communicate with the foreign players on my team. Um, the Norwegians pretty, uh, speak pretty good English, so they're no problem. Um, as far as Wenli Rong, her Chinese has improved tremendously over the last couple months, and uh, we just try to get some basic words in the back, like step up, drop off, track, um, but she's doing a great job, and we know some Chinese as well. We tell her how Jila all the time. It's fantastic. Hey, Carla, you got me good on uh, the show last week inside WUSA Soccer. Uh -huh. So Wendy from Chapel Hill has a question. What were you thinking about in the late 80s when you uh, showed up to China wow. in that hairdo? I was thinking that um, I was going to change the, uh, the style in China with my perm, and uh, I figured if I showed up with one, maybe the whole Chinese national team would get one. Is that you, really? You bet. That's you? It's wow. me. Wow. Oh, and who is that? Uh, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Carla, wow. you got me back. Wow. Oh. Hey, okay, nice good. hairdo. Carla, Broadway. thanks a lot. Thanks. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, JP, for getting my back up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's good luck, Carla. Overbeck, captain thanks. of the Carolina Courage, joining us here at halftime. It's a one to nothing lead for Carolina over the Washington Freedom on a goal scored by Savannah Bertini. We have a lot more still to come your way. You're watching TNT's coverage of the WUSA. <laughs> Kids today are too soft. Mom cleaned our cuts with soap and water. Now Band-Aid brand introduces hurt free antiseptic wash with lidocaine to relieve the pain. Uh, Where's this one net? New Band-Aid brand hurt free antiseptic wash. Let's do it. These guys don't look so tough. Heads up! I got your back. Where you live? Go, go, go! Come on, baby. Time to go for a spin. Gatorade. Bring your game to life. I'll take the big guy. Which big guy? Nobody understands your passion to play like Sports Illustrated for Women magazine. Whether you're trying to make the team or just staying fit, SI for Women is what you want. Heroes. Inspiration. Real life style and great gear now there's a special offer call now to get a free preview issue and be your best on and off the court sports illustrated for women call now when you have an ailment different doctors might recommend different treatments but for yeast infections the number one recommendation of doctors is specific monostat 
the number one doctor recommended brand, Monistat. Welcome back, everyone, to Chapel Hill, where Carolina leads Washington by the score of one to nothing. I'm John Paul Della Camera. It's early in the season, but we can still present to you the best of the WUSA. Here's a music video of the first games played. section has enjoyed all of the action of the WUSA. They used to enjoy North Carolina soccer. I'm sure they still do. Who wouldn't love a winner? They won all those titles. Carolina leads one other. Ah, kids. Band-Aid brand advanced healing. Clinically proven to heal faster than ordinary bandages, it acts like an instant scab, sealing in the body's fluids so wounds heal faster. Band-Aid brand advanced healing. Sweet. You like? I like. Check this. Look at it one way. Let's go. Come on. The Tiburon from Hyundai, backed by America's best warranty plan. So you're free to take on the open road when you find it. If you have astigmatism, you may think you're restricted to wearing glasses. Introducing AccuView Torek contact lenses. For astigmatism, AccuView is scientifically balanced, fitting the unique shape of your eye. AccuView, advancing the science of sight. Ready? Wait a sec. Ready? Wait, first you have to try one of these. Clean and clear oil absorbing sheets. Here we go. Instantly remove oil and shine. Wow! Without smudging your makeup. Ew! Hey! Clean and clear oil absorbing sheets. Clean and clear and under control. No matter where I travel, one thing remains the same. Everybody loves Ford here in the Lone Star State. No one buys cars for less from the factory than Archer Chrysler Jeep. Hi, I'm Bob Archer, inviting you to our huge sale at Archer Chrysler Jeep, Southwest Freeway at Beltway 8. Hi, I'm Paul Archer. We're opening early and closing late for this huge sale. If it's discounts you want, you can save $6,000 on every Cherokee in stock, and we have a lot of them. Hi, I'm Jeff Archer. Buy a new Grand Cherokee for $23,995 or 1.9% APR for 60 months. Everything is on sale at Archer Chrysler Jeep, Southwest Freeway at Beltway 8. Welcome back, everyone, to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Halftime score, Carolina Courage 1, Washington Freedom, no score. Bertini has the lone goal. While we were away, three lucky fans were given the chance to win $1,000 in the Hyundai Halftime Kick. Each week, Hyundai Motor America, charter sponsor of the WUSA, gives every fan walking into the stadium a chance to kick for cash. Three lucky fans were chosen from today's game to compete and show off their skills. 
This week's participants proved worthy of the challenge. We salute them on a job well done. I don't know how we did it, but we managed to week off next week. So the next game you'll see, San Diego at Atlanta, May the 12th on TNT. Shannon McMillan and Julie Foudy for the San Diego Spirit against Brian Escuri, Cindy Parlow, and Soon Wen of the Atlanta Beat. Join us for full coverage, 12 p.m. Eastern time on TNT. Silvana Bertini has the lone goal that came early in the eighth minute. Will it stand up? We still have another half to go from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Come back with us. too soft. Mom cleaned our cuts with soap and water. Now Band-Aid brand introduces her free antiseptic wash with lidocaine to relieve the pain. Uh, Where's the sport in that? New Band-Aid brand hurt free antiseptic wash. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Your desire. Introducing Venus from Gillette. The first razor designed to make you feel like a goddess. Protective cushions surround three blades for the closest shave ever in just one stroke. So close, your skin stays smoother, longer. And that's something all goddesses are entitled to. Now, individually sealed blades are easy to store, easy to change. Venus, reveal the goddess in you. The raindrops keep falling on my head. But that doesn't mean my eyes will soon be. The Sonata from Hyundai, with the freedom of America's best warranty plan for 10 years, without a care in the world. Get 0.9% APR financing on the Sonata now. If you have astigmatism, you may think you're restricted to wearing glasses. Introducing AccuView Toric contact lenses for astigmatism. AccuView is scientifically balanced, fitting the unique shape of your eye. AccuView, advancing the science of sight. Welcome back, everyone. A great day today in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. A bit hot, and certainly for the players down on the field. It's a one to nothing lead in favor of the Carolina Courage. Wendy, this is the most entertaining first half we've seen in the three games we've done on TNT. You're right, JP, it is. And we will take a look at some of the action in the first half. There's Silvana Bertini coming in. Far post. Look at this beautiful header back where it came from. And the Courage are excited. And then on the other end, Aaron Baxter goes in hard against Ham. Her leg is planted. She went down with a knee injury, but we were all happy to see her back on the field. She's got a little brace on her uh, on her leg. And take a look here, Justy Pongard hits a left-footed rocket just wide. And we have Rosa Lee dancing through the defense, but finally she gets stopped and taken down. And another look here. Look at this, Justy Baumgart. She wants to have this back. If she'd headed it back where it came from, that would have been a goal. A Baumgart had the best chances. She had three of the Washington Freedoms' four shots. We'll see if these teams make changes when we come back to Chapel Hill. Ready? Oh, wait, wait. Clean and clear oil-absorbing sheets. Instantly remove oil and shine. Wow. Without smudging your makeup. Absorbing sheets. Clean and clear and under control. Kids today are too soft. Mom cleaned our cuts with soap and water. Now Band-Aid brand introduces her free antiseptic wash with lidocaine to relieve the pain. Uh, Where's the sport in that? New Band-Aid brand hurt free antiseptic wash. No one buys cars for less from the factory than Archer Chrysler Jeep. Hi, I'm Bob Archer inviting you to our huge sale at Archer Chrysler Jeep, Southwest Freeway at Beltway 8. Hi, I'm Paul Archer. We're opening early and closing late for this huge sale. If it's discounts you want, you can save $6,000 on every Cherokee in stock, and we have a lot of them. Hi, I'm Jeff Archer. Buy a new Grand Cherokee for $23,995 or 1.9% APR for 60 months. Everything is on sale at Archer Chrysler Jeep, Southwest Freeway at Beltway 8. You're closer than ever to your best deal ever on a new Chevrolet at Lawrence Marshall Chevrolet in Jersey Village. We've red tagged every Chevy in our huge inventory with our low Marshall discount price. No hype, no bull, just our low Marshall discount price red tagged on every single Chevy Suburban, Tahoe, pickup, van, and car on the lot. Lawrence Marshall Chevrolet in Jersey Village. We clobber big city prices. 
Here are the numbers from the first half. We mentioned Baumgart at three of the four shots for Washington. Bertini with a couple of shots, Patopoulos two, and Hegarisa with two. Or not for a great save by Molinix. This would be a 2-0 game. Instead, the Bertini goal is all we have as we get ready to start the second half with Wendy Gabara. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Carolina with the ball in blue, Washington in white. <laughs> and they'll play it back to Carla Overbeck. You see what adjustments these teams have made at halftime. Carolina certainly went in with a better team at the start of that last half, but then Washington came back and had Baumgart been a little bit sharper, it's 1-1. Oh, no question about it. I don't think Norby would have been able to make a save on that diving header that Justin Baumgart had. Both teams are coming out, no changes. I don't think they're going to change their style much. I think Carolina is going to continue to try and come out in a high pressure. DC's having trouble dealing with that high pressure. They're not able to settle the ball down quite as much. On that far side, Baumgart was chasing it. She last touched it out. Throw in coming up. They love their soccer in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. They've been spoiled by all the winning. Coming back, out of the back. Grubb, who plays right in front of those defenders. To Ham, then the touch back to Skyler Little. Little brings it toward a crowded middle. That's not a good ball back for Stacker. She got rid of it. Over back, back there with Rosalie. They collide. Rosalie brings it down. Pertinia makes the run. Pass goes to the outside. Good decision to French. Ball might have been too far ahead of her. She cut it back, and there's Overbeck. And now Carolina will clear it out. Straight up the middle. Metopoulos. Danielle played it wide. Right side, Jankowski trying to send it up the field. And this one was angled out of play. Throw in for the Washington Freedom. Deep in their own territory. Amanda Cromwell. Back for Stacker. That was cleared back the other way by Carolina. Barr will get there first. Carolina's forward unit trying to put some high pressure on their way upfield. Well, they are in the midfield, is closing the gap and supporting them very nicely. We saw DC do that very well in the end of the second half with Baumgart supporting Rosalie and Fatinia. Rosalie will play it left. Barr off the left foot. Cleared by Carolina. Hangarisa. They want the offense to flow through her. Foul on Rosalie. Free kick for the Carolina Courage. 48th minute. Agarisa trying to put her stamp on this game. Over back to Hagarisa. Risa sliding it through. Good ball right side. The cross was blocked from Jankowski. She can try it again. Bar defense. Played across. And it's cleared away before Hendershot can get a shot away. Retinia leaving it off right side. Good run up field. First time we've seen Stacker go that far off. And at the halfway line, she went down. Stacker, not a good back pass there. And another rough collision. Skyler Little and Hendershot. JP, this DC defense is getting themselves into trouble with these soft back passes. And here's Skyler. She's limping around trying to shake off a tackle there. It's got to be more crisp, especially Hendershot. She's playing really nicely in those seams, and she's turning it on when she needs to, lulling them into a little bit of uh, complacency, and then she attacks. And win she's winning a lot of those loose balls. Mullenix, who used to play here, won three titles with Carolina. Plays it forward for Tina. Maybe a step behind Roberts. Roberts got a good angle on it because she appeared to be beaten. Good recovery from Roberts. Virginia switching it out. Ham is open for the moment. Roberts with that speed will cut and close her down. Mia couldn't get around her. That's great deep from Tiffany Roberts, one-on-one. -on -one. And great cover as well by Hegarisa, who's coming out with the ball here. Good 2v1 to stop that uh, DC attack. They go on the counter. Bertini behind Fotopoulos. Fly was up anyway. Here at DC, on the attack here, and we have Pertinia, she's in the box, but look at Roberts, she knows, she knows Pertinia so well, goes ahead and plays that ball back to Norby, great defensive play by Tiffany Roberts. Back to live action, French will play it back, Far, take it on, a defender or two, slides it in, the offside flag goes up, as Norby goes over anyway, as French made the run. 50th minute, Carolina leading on a Bertini goal. Hope they're wearing sunscreen today. To Scorcher in Chapel Hill. Savannah Bertini's goal came in the eighth minute.
Becker will hold. Sky in the middle. Back to Stacker. Almost gave it away. Again, those soft passes continue. Not just the back passes, even the side ones, lateral ones. Brought down. Set long by Pretinia to Ham. Rosalie makes a run off the ball. Mia will hold it. Looking. Try to play it in a space to the feet of Pretinia. She goes down. Trying to draw a penalty kick. Hegerisa, nice move to bring it back. That was so well done. Carolina is, is organizing well in defense, bringing an extra man in there to create 2v1, creating numbers up. But one thing I think that we probably, uh, if we were in the locker room for D.C., we would have heard Jim Gabera say is they got to find Ham more out on the right side, and they're doing that. And when they do that, D.C. is dangerous. 51st minute, off the Roberts throw it. Ham got to that. Headed up by Wendley Wrong. Brought back down by Cromwell. Clearance by Little. The run is by Rosalie, but Wendley Wrong is back there. Wendley Wrong, one of several players who have played in all three World Cups and a couple of Olympics. One of Wendley Wrong's teammates will be with Washington next week. My G should be playing by next weekend. And again, Ed Mackin and back as well. So this Washington team is good. They're going to get better. Bertini with it, left side. Trying to loop it between a couple of defenders, and instead, Barr cleared it to Little. Nearly given away to Bertini. Good support from Cromwell, but Carolina gets the ball back. Nagarisa to Roberts. This goes out of play. It belongs to Washington. Skyler Little, UCLA's captain for a couple of years. Long one up the wing and lost by Rosalie. It's Carolina's ball. Tiffany Roberts, solid game so far today. She was one of the original founding players. 53rd minute. Bertini. He's got a little, plays it over. Carolina back, winning the ball easily on the giveaway. Burnt. Upfield, maybe a chance there. Hendershot could not make the final play, but she'll get a corner kick for her team. Number six. So Carolina had the edge on the shots of the first half and the corners, too. We have an opportunity here to keep your eye on. We'll show you here. Keep your eye on number six, Danielle Fotopoulos. She's got great height in the air. Pegadisa hits it the way she wants to. That's who she's targeting. Yeah, Jen, watch number six making that run in the box. Jen Grubb is marking Fotopoulos for the moment. Yay! Play it up. It's towards Danielle. She heads it down. She got to it despite the marking of Jen Grubb. Isn't technology wonderful, JP? Yeah, it is. Thank you, Telestrator. We'll take a look here. We told you to keep your eye on her. And Jen Grubb is falling her air there, but nobody can really compete with Fotopoulos in the air. She, unfortunately, she has to back up just a bit, and I think that took a little bit off of her header. Daniel Fatopoulos broke all the goal-scoring records that Mia Hamm and Tiffany Milbert had in college. Shattered them. She ended up with 118. Hamm and Milbert were at 103. Everyone remembers the big goal she scored because it beat Carolina in the final when she That's played right. for Florida. Siri Molnitz was in the nets for Carolina. Skyler Little, right side. Washington down by a goal on the road. 54th minute. The flick was too far intended for Hamm from Baumgart. And it goes out. coming up Tiffany Roberts had to leave school early but she was able to manage the challenge of playing with the national team and learning about school yeah. when I decided to leave high school early to take correspondence courses it was not a hard decision because I had this awesome opportunity to go and train with the national team for six months prior to the 95 World Cup so no it wasn't a tough decision I missed my prom and a few fun uh, senior activities but it was well worth it you know, she's going to be 24 years old in May, and we saw her play when she was 16. And we are how old, JP? No, 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 Things no. that make us feel old, right? Only talk about the players' ages. Oh, that's right. Oh, oh you're not going to tell no. us your name. No, no, no. Rosalie looking for that ball as it's broken up. We've got a free kick from Carolina, who lead on a Bertini goal. The goal came way back in the eighth minute of play. 
Carlo Overbeck, and that defense has been pretty well organized despite her being banged up, and the same with Benton Nordby. Back to Overbeck. Hagadisa. Nice turn. To the right side. Burke advances. Stacey Burt will play it wide and long, and even on this long field, that's going to be too long. It's a goal kick for Surrey Molinex. The WUSA on TNT is being brought to you by AccuView brand contact lenses, advancing the science of sight. And by Venus from Gillette for Women, reveal the goddess in you. Hendershot's had a few chances today. She was a late starter when this team had a couple of injuries. A couple of players didn't make it in terms of the fitness test. Carolina has looked good today, much better than they did last week against the Boston Breakers when they lost 1-0 on this field. Metropolis broken up, taken back, Jankowski, and they're going to call it the other way. So it's Washington's ball. On the throw-in. Carolina getting it back, holding it. Metropolis, Hegarisa, down the right side, and the flag just goes up on Jankowski. Keep your head up when you're playing with Hegarisa. She will get that ball to you. midfielder, a young soccer player. Watch Hegarisa when she has the ball especially, but even off the ball, she gets herself into positions where once the ball does turn around, she knows what to do. She's always thinking. She looks at this game of soccer like a chess match. Might make a good coach someday. French to the far side. Pulling it back. Stacker. Picked off. Carolina back with it. Intended for Henry's shot. She'll be cut off, and Molnix has it. Molnix gets ready to put it back into play. Siri, one of those ex-Carolina players, excited to be back on this field. Last play here in 99. Grubb will turn it back up the middle. Washington has Ham wide open on the right. Baumgart needed to find her earlier. Now the defense catches up, but there's Mia still with the ball. Doing a little magic on her field of dreams, but play that ball across off Baumgart. That hurts. She's down. Jankowski will clear. The play continues. Rachel Wu looks down to see if she's seriously hurt. It doesn't matter because now they're going to clear the ball out anyway. She immediately called to the sideline. Lindsay Stacker's been the player for DC who's done so well to organize the back. Let's take a look here. Uh, the rule on offsides. They freeze it there. The ball's in the air. Now this is the player that gets called offsides. If you're even, you're on. If you're ahead of that last defender, you're off. Go ahead, roll it. Let's see the serve. She's off. And that is a good call by the linesman. Still one nothing in favor of Carolina. Baumgart is okay. May have had the wind knocked out of her a bit. But back up and playing. Left side, French to the corner flag, and that cross just gets away. Goal kick for Nordby in the 59th minute. And Michelle French, a star of the under-21 national team for the United States, their captain for a few years with that under-21 squad. Now trying to be one of the young stars of this league, maybe one of the players that you don't know as much about because of a lack of national team, full national team exposure, but you'll get some of that here. French defending. Bertinia picks it up. On the wing. To the running French. Overbeck knocks it away from her and out. Washington's ball on the throw-in. They find Bertinia. She'll loop it up. Not high enough. Wendy Wrong was there. Off the giveaway. Freedom get it back. Cromwell couldn't tee it up as it's cleared. Towards Fotopoulos. She'll miss that in the air. Stacker wins it to Barr. Bar keeps it on the ground. That's broken up. Bar will have another crack at it. Back to Stacker. Then the long ball. French still making the run. Bird is back there. And she played that a little nonchalantly. Here's Carl Overbeck, who knows what to do. She just wanted to play it safe and clear it out. That ball put Carl in a tough spot. 60th minute. Still one other Carolina. And we're getting ready for substitution for Washington Navy for Barr. 
JP, my read on this is that Barr has been playing on that left side. Maybe they need some fresh legs to combat uh, Kim Jankowski, number 11 for Carolina, running down the right side. She's been involved in a lot of the attacks, and French is getting caught a little bit up on defense, so maybe some fresh legs to fill in that spot back there on the left back. Fresh legs and good legs from Davey, who ran cross country and track in high school. And she'll start off on this right side. She was up when Mia Hamm went down with an apparent injury earlier, and then took a seat back on the bench when Hamm continued. Skyler Little broke it up. On the run back, Hendershot. Marin Hendershot will lead it left as knocked away. Jiffy, we had some information that came from the sidelines on this sub. I'll tell you a little more about this. Actually, DC is moving Mia Hamm up into more of an attacking role. You know she's happy about this, and she combines so well because her game is just a little bit different with the, the way that she uh, attacks the ball. More technical speed than the Brazilians. So it'll be an interesting uh, new wrinkle for the DC attack. Here's Grubb. He brought Hamm back to play right midfield. One of the reasons he injured right shoulder. But let's keep in mind, her timing is a bit off. She's only played in a couple of preseason matches against college teams in one game of the WUSA, so she hasn't had that uh, game competition to work on. They kept her out for most of the preseason. And she's still trying to look for 90 minutes of fitness, and truly, this, this point of the season, everybody is, but she's just a bit behind because of that injury. Long ball towards Hagarisa. This time, she was at the end of that instead of the one serving it, but it was too far. 62nd minute. Off the Washington throw it. That was taken away. Carolina will get it back. Under shot. Didn't have enough on that, and Mullenix takes it over. Sixty-second minutes to one nothing for Carolina. Get ready for Cop, who started out a warrior and became something more. Don't miss the all-new original series, Witchblade, coming June 5th to TNT. Bertini will push it back. Went the wrong. Near side, and Hendershot just ran out of space. Skyler Little. Off that throw in towards Rosalie. Wendley Wrong has got her covered. And played it right back to Nordby. Bad giveaway from Nordby. Martinia leads it. Ham couldn't cut inside. That's young Stacy Burt with another big defensive play from Carolina. And the one-on-ones, they've done okay, and that's something Marsha McDermott didn't want to see. Not many one-on-ones against the Hams, Rosalies, and Pertinia. Off the Ham throw it. Baumgart flicks. Headed up by Rosalie, not high enough for Pertinia. Cleared. Metropolis. Pushing it forward. French on the run. Baumgart for support. She wins it. Justy plays it up long. Norby in the air. Grabs that. Long toss to Risa. Two greats battling there. Hagarisa won that battle. And look what she does with the ball. Right sideline. Jankowski. Trying to go out wider. Nice coverage. And Carmel knocked it out for a corner kick. Now the referee says goal kick. Rachel Rue overrules the referee's assistant. The player for Carolina that you need to keep your eye on. She's been awesome. And take it easily. Look at these opportunities. She, she serves that ball. Another ball here. Look at this combination. Risa takes a nice right footed shot. And Molnix comes up huge and makes the near post save. Agarisa, the leader of this team, when they have the ball. French to the left. Intended for Ham, cutting across. Ham will get this, that's a gift. Me up the middle. Tough collision that time. And Baxter went down. Baxter was the one that challenged Ham earlier. All the way across on the left. Cromwell runs it up. Krista Davies still wide on the right side, and Bertini's one tracking her as the flag goes up on Washington. Next 65th minute, Bertini has the lone goal. It came in the eighth minute as Carolina leads looking for their first win of the season. 
Chippy, we had some reports that came to us up here in the booth from the sidelines, and uh, two things that Carolina's trying to do a little bit better this half. One, one that they're trying to improve upon is their defensive presence. They need to double up a little bit more. You talked about that early on. You can't let Ham, Rosalie, or Putinia have a 1v1, otherwise you're going to get fried. And the other thing is they're going to try, I'll come back to this one second. They're going to try and buy a little time on set pieces. So milk the clock a bit. They've got a 1-0 lead. Now, the one thing I always criticize, but teams that try and milk the clock, it's tough because you don't want to milk the clock and then get complacent. You've got to still keep your focus and keep precise and efficient on the ball. Seventh corner kick of the day for the Carolina Courage. Angelisa goes over to take it. Last time we saw Fatopoulos win the ball in the air with Grubb marking her. We'll see if Hagarisa goes the same way. Watch for number six in blue. Fatopoulos gets to her again. She couldn't get it. Bertini up in the air. Molinex punching it out. Fatopoulos shot off the post. Off the outside edge of the post, but Carolina made it interesting. They could be one of the more dangerous teams in this league, Wendy, on set pieces, especially the corner kicks. Well, Hagarisa is so precise with her serves, and we know she's trying to find Fotopoulos, but what was so good is the backup support to Fotopoulos. Look at this ball. Beautiful ball by Rise. It's pulled out enough that Mullenix doesn't have a chance, but it's Sylvana Bertini that keeps putting pressure on the ball, and then follow-up shot by Fotopoulos hits off the post. They're looking good on the corners. It's a 1-0 lead. For Carolina, will it be enough to win it? 66 minutes gone. Washington trailing on the road. This is Skyler Little. Grubb knocked away. Sent the other way. Left side intended for French. That ball needed to go wider. Stacey Burt knocked it away. Burt's been one of the unsung players on this team, especially here today. She's played well. We're going to foul call by Rachel Wu. This last opportunity, we get a chance to look at it, presented by AccuView. Fotopoulos takes her shot, and there's the 12th man there. The post gets in the way and keeps it from going in the net. Back to live action, Skyler Little holding up play. No balls on this right side to Krista Davy, and she's been out there, but she has been open. Bertini's playing off of her a bit. Giving her some room. Ham looks for Davy, who tried to cut inside. Roberts again with a solid defensive play, disrupting the offense of Washington. Quick throw in by Ham. Roberts got there quick, and there's the support from Wendley Wrong. Still, Davy picks it up, and then gave it right to Bertini. Locked off via Ham. Throwing coming up. Big weekend for me, isn't it? Besides the game, she's got her golf tournament. Oh, Jiffy, I'm glad you brought that up. The Mia Hamm Foundation's second annual golf classic. Her parents are here, in the, and her, actually her family, and a number of family members. Other uh, stars that'll be in town, some of the LPGA players, Doug Flutie's going to be playing. Um, so it's going to be a great event. Sunday night will be an auction where they'll try and raise money. Um, again, two causes, provide opportunities for girls in sports, and also her brother Garrett passed away from, uh, from leukemia. So bone marrow research is another uh, place that they'll be providing money back. It's a great event. Monday will be the golf tournament. On the full sprint the other way. Hendershot showing some good speed as he's cleared away. Hendershot and Jankowski really worked hard on the wings today. Bertini. Touched out by David. JP, we talked about Flutie coming in. There's a great story that his daughter was watching the Michael Jordan and Mia Hamm commercial. And, he, and she turned to her dad and said, Dad, you know, who's that guy in that commercial with Mia? Say, have, have we arrived in yeah. women's soccer? Oh. Ball is cleared away by Skyler Little. Tiffany Roberts brings it down. Hegarisa tried to go early with that. Not a good pass from her. Doesn't try a little mistake or two. Over back to Burt. Baxter. Straight up the middle. Topless, nice flick on to Hegarisa. It didn't work that time, but it might later. Here's a quick shot that got away from Hendershot. But you have to like the communication that time between Fotopoulos as a passer and Risa as the receiver. Not the other way around. Thank you. 70th minutes to one of the Carolina. Daniel Fotopoulos speaks about working with Hegarisa. Hege in the center, she's just awesome. She, you know, they get along so well with the team as a whole, and, you know, she's our playmaker. She plays me in, great balls, you know, we're really learning to work together well, and they're just awesome to play with, and God, we don't have to play against them anymore. Wendy, how long do you think it takes 
to work things out like that between Reese and Petopoulos. Weeks, games? Well, JP, wouldn't you agree with the Boston Carolina match that that click was not happening? Right, I and agree. In a, in a week's time, they've been able to communicate a little bit more. So I would say they've, had a, they've made great progress this week. 70th minute, Carolina still up by a goal. Nordby with a clearance. Brought down. Grub. Right side. Scarred a little. Long ball played the other way. Nordby will be back for it. Clearing it left side to Roberts. Pressure by Davy. Back to Nordby. That was a back pass, wasn't it? I thought Did so. she handle? Sure look like it. Little explanation there on the back pass. If the ball comes back to the goalkeeper, passed by her own teammate, her own defensive player, she cannot pick it up. She's got to use her feet. And on that one, that was questionable. We thought it came off the Carolina defense, came back to her, and she picked it up. So I think they got away with one there, JP. Here's Stacey Burke. Up the middle. Deking on Baumgart. Going to the right side. Feels much hotter than the 77 degrees at kickoff in Chapel Hill. In this hot sun. These teams are now used to it with the temperature here in certainly Washington. They know what it's like baking out there in D.C. and especially on the wide and long field to RK Stadium. So that should be a factor either way. The thing, though, for Washington, you mentioned it before, they've not played in a couple of weeks. That's right. I think uh, taking a week off from a match just hurts them a bit just because they don't have that 90-minute game that they're playing to keep them fit for 90 minutes. Metopolis tried to poke it ahead. Snacker knocked it away. Risa from Burt. Chased by Rosalie. Hegarisa. Magician on the ball to the right side. Cleared away. French is back there. It comes back to Nordby. Nordby will hold on. Now to the side. It comes to Davy. Stacker. Baumgart pushing it left. Amanda Cromwell has taken over that far left side. In the spot where Barr was, Davy has gone over all the way over to the right, and Ham has pushed forward. Washington trying to break down this Carolina defense. Maybe here with Grubb coming up farther. Touch back to Sky in a little, as far up as she's come today. It was intended for Baumgart, settled. Ham this time wide on the left side for French. French strikes the cross. Nordby has got it with traffic in the box. If she ever lost that ball, you had the two Brazilians right there. Chippy, I think with DC playing with three up, the t up top, they need to play it a little bit quicker and try and develop their attack before Carolina gets back. You saw them take a little bit too much time, too patient, and, it, and what it ended up evolving was that Carolina had like 10 players behind the ball. Tough to attack that type of defense. Hang it, Risa from Jankowski. Risa plays it up. What a hender shot. Scared a little. She nearly gave that away for a corner, but Mullenix reacts well at the end line. Link up with WUSA.com and purchase game tickets and team t-shirts, caps, and so much more. It's all online at WUSA.com. Go link to women's professional soccer. Rachel Wu has spotted another foul, and we're going to see a substitution. Rosalie will leave, and Milburn will come in. This may be a, a case of some fresh legs out here. The Brazilians today don't seem to be working or clicking well together. JP, and this, this sub also with uh, Milburn is going to give them a little bit height, a little bit of height up top, which will be nice on set pieces. Good target in the air. Free kick for Baumgart. She'll send it long. Milburn was looking for it. Couldn't get to it. Jason Milburn is out of UCLA. Same school as this person, Skyler Little. Will play it up. The back heel intended for Milburn. And it's taken away. Bertini on the left. 75th minute. Bertini still with the only goal of this game. Good job of holding the ball. Double team still has it. But this time she lost it. Going for Washington. Oh, 
Here's Baumgart. Cracking it. Baumgart shot. Just skims up top and over to Orby. Baumgart is so good with the ball in her left foot. Look at this rip from the top of the box. She's probably 25 yards out, just over the crossbar. And we'll take another look, presented by AccuView. Another great shot. Unbelievable look from the camera behind the goal, and it just sails right over the crossbar. Norby had it covered, however. And Norby sends it the other way. Cromwell in the air. Carolina will get it back. Jankowski on the wing. Looking to cut inside, and that time defended pretty well by Cromwell, but it goes out. Going from Jankowski, far side. Marsha McDermott wanted to attack the flanks of Washington today because they used the three backs, and it's worked pretty well for them. We've kept our eye on Kim Jankowski. She's been involved in a lot of attacks down this right side in the second half. I keep pointing out that in order for them to be successful, they need to get the ball wide and then work it back in. 76th minute, still 1-0 for Carolina. Silvana Bertini with the lone goal, came in the 8th minute. In the air, played back by Overbeck. Nicely done, back to Nordby. Nordby will wait with Milburn right there on the doorstep. Here's the clearance. Couple of bounces. Jankowski will chase it, has some help. Bert, Marisa, an immediate look up, and there's Bertini making the run. Bertini tried to bring it down. She'll get it, good hustle. Savannah Bertini, the Canadian international, lost it. May recover, Ham goes back to win it from her. Good dribbling by Ham to come out of the pack. Cuts it back at Roberts. Milburn. With those fresh legs back to Baumgart. Touched back by Pertinia. No flag up. Milburn going after, but Norby was there. The ball just too far in front of him. The 78th minute. Off the Norby clearance. Baumgart was the first player there. Now instead it's Cromwell. Back to Stacker. Little is to her right. Monica Gerardo is up on one side. Keller on the opposite side for Carolina. We may see a change for both. And this one will go out of play, so maybe we'll see the change right now. They get the referee's attention. It's Beth Keller from right here, right here. Clemson. And Stone, too. Naomi Stone. You're allowed four subs plus one goalkeeper in the WUSA. In a league like MLS, it's three plus the goalkeeper. We're going to see Baumgart leave Gerardo in. And realistically, Gerardo was the starter in game one. Baumgart took her spot today, so that's that change. Well, Baumgart's had a great game. She's been involved as a, a playmaker for D.C. She's just tired. And the other subs for Carolina, Beth Keller gives fresh legs up top. Fotopoulos is a bit tired. She just gave birth not too long ago to a baby girl. So she's still working on her game fitness. And then Bertini comes out with a, has a great match, but they need some fresh legs again on the left side. And Naomi Stone, she has jets, JP. Keep your eye on her out on this left side. Bertini played well today. Here is Mullenix. Not just because she had the goal, she was dangerous. Taken back the other way. Carolina will play it up to Beth Keller. Milburn touched it back, looks for the return. And that didn't work. Back the other way. Look out below. Mullenix will clear. She had to be active and she clears it away. And the play it goes. Grubb was battling with Keller. It'll be a throw in for Carolina. Here's what you're talking about. Waste a little time. That's right. They're going to milk the clock a bit. <laughs> On this left side. Baxter was there. Taken back. Little. Far 
left sideline. Washington will play it up the middle. And back by Gerardo. So no Fotopoulos and no Bertini, but they don't really need offense right now so much as they need the defense, the fresh legs, and the composure. I'll take that comment to another level, JP. As far as defense, it starts up top. So actually bringing Fotopoulos out with fresh legs from Keller, that's a good move because if they can pressure that Washington defense, they're not going to be able to have easy serves up to the D.C. attack. Free kick for Washington. Scrum puts it down. The stacker. We're in the 81st minute. Carolina still leading by a goal. Trying to win their first game of this young season. Right down, it went towards Milburn, but far enough away from her. Roberts had her shielded well. Nordby will clear. Another whistle from Rachel Wu. The outside flag was up. Today's game is being brought to you by Clean and Clear. And by AccuView. Still one nothing in favor of Carolina. And it's Little to the right side for Ham. Foul was called. Stacker will put it in play on the free kick. 82nd minute. Cleared away by Carolina. And Washington will recover. They're up against the Carolina defense and also the clock. Cromwell bothered on that side. And the foul was called as Keller came in late. This isn't the area that Carolina wants to be giving up fouls. Look at this ball from Ham. And it tied it right off the free kick from Mia Ham. Virginia is now the leading goal scorer in the WUSA. That's her second of the season. Dangerous ham steps up, quick restart, beautiful ball in to the box. Look at this ball bouncing in here, and Pratinia comes up and makes a beautiful shot to the low post here. This one's presented by Acu. If you look at this ball, it bounces right at the foot, actually taken down beautifully by Pratinia, and she just slots it far post low. Carolina cannot be giving up fouls in that area. That's unfortunate. JP actually, um, Beth Keller came in and she's had a couple fouls already called on her. She doesn't need to be fouling that area. Just be patient. You got fresh legs, and it's really um, that was a that was a bad mistake there. Third corner kick, 82nd minute for Bertinia. The only other goal was Bertini in the eighth minute. So French will take the corner. Hard off the left foot. Outside the box, Washington's half heads it up. Maybe a chance right there. Blocked on Pertinia's shot by Norby. She almost had her second. What a collapse that would have been for Carolina. Up 1-0. Could have gone down 2-1. Remember, you can have draws in this game. In the playoffs, they'll go overtime, but not during the regular season. So after 90 minutes, if it's still 1-1, this game will end with each team getting a point. Beautiful play here. Ham keeps the ball alive. And look where it bounces to, to the foot of Pratinia. But Carolina does a great job to hold their players on the post. And that was Stacy Bird, held her positioning on the far post and made an easy clear out of the back. Pratina shows how dangerous she can be. That time, nearly her second goal of this game. Collaborating with Ham. They read each other well in that free kick. It's something they've not been doing this game or even in the inaugural game. Reading each other. Push that way back. Molnix is communicating, but there's a miscommunication back there because they're going to give up a corner. They had a couple of defenders back and the goalkeeper. This is the eighth corner for Carolina. So many times games have come down to set pieces. JP and Hegarty, so she's going to be looking for, for top. Actually, Fotopoulos is out. My bad. Hendershot, number 20, and also Keller, number 14, making the run through the box. Again, it's a Hegarisa corner. She's taking them all. 
The Norwegian star gets ready. Right to the middle. It's a loose ball inside. Molex was going to get it and then had a back pedal. And Washington will clear. Stacy Burt. Looking long. That's going to be too long. Well, if you're Washington, you've just fought back, you've tied the game, and you certainly don't want to give one up there. They'll take the point, I would think, at this stage, being the visiting team. Mullenix will be able to put it back into play. Pratinia, star of the first game in the fact that she scored the only goal, and here she gets another timely one. Clear it back the other way. Virginia settles it. Milburn in his face. Davey shows you some of that speed, but so does Naomi Stone, who got her. That should have been a foul. That was a blatant push by Davey. Play is allowed to continue. Intercepted. Here's Grubb. Grubb's cross. One missed by Milburn, but it's settled by French. French play inside. Quick shot. Not enough on that. Virginia, what an effort just to reach that ball with Wendley Rung defending. Nordby clears, 86th minute. Washington, though, no doubt Wendy juiced up by getting that goal that tied it. A little bit of momentum for them. JP, that last attack, um, did you see Milburn here? She's fighting. Now, take a look. Look at this ball. Hits her arm. Blatant handball in the box and no call by the referee. Boy, DC got away with a big one there. Pushed all the way across. Skyler Little, 87th minute. All of a sudden, Coutinho doesn't even look tired here. Stone was broken up. Foul call there. Free kick, Carolina. They're telling Coutinho to play the ball, play up a little closer. They don't want this free serve from Wendley Wrong. I don't think she's reading that from the bench. Well, Jim Gabar and his assistant, David Vinoli, were shouting out to her. She drifted back. Here's Hagenica. That one's blocked. Settled. Pushed back up by Baxter. High and wide of the target. Well, it's time to win or go home. The NBA playoffs are continuing tonight. The Orlando Magic may be down to the last game. They're hosting the Bucks. Coverage begins tonight at 8 p.m. on TNT. Bucks trying to beat Orlando for the 12th great time. Tracy McGrady hopes to have something to say about that tonight for Orlando. Join Freddie Johnson and Kenny Smith in the studio this evening from Atlanta. You know, I get to meet uh, Kenny, finally. Finally? Again, Good. doesn't know me from Adam, but... Sorry, Hill Connection. Told him he needed to come into our studio show and um, give him, I give him some soccer tips. He'd fit right in. He gave me a nice Tar Heel hug. <laughs> I thought you guys said Tar Heel t-shirt. No. Offside flag on this side for Washington. 88th minute, one apiece. Thanks, man. Goal scores, Bertini in the eighth. Bertini in the 82nd. Still no goals from an American player in the WSA. And the stone looking. Down she goes, a late challenge from Davey. Free kick from Carolina. You can't afford to be giving these up here. This close to goal is late in the game. Especially when Rise is the player making the serve here. Molnix. Trying to communicate with that wall. It's a wall of two. Hagadisa bent it in. Not high enough. Hagadisa brings it back down. She pumps it right back up. Keller just driving straight on it. Keller's going to be the hero there. Instead, it's Molnix. Molnix is so confident. Look at the end of this play as it develops here. Hagadisa, great ball in an offside position, gets her shot off, but Molinix is so strong, makes a nice diving save to her right. Now Molinix not as busy as she was.